Fifth coach beeline from 1245 until 105. Then Kansas access begins with the open locker room at 110. At 115, we'll have the presentation of the Associated Press Coach of the Year. That'll be right in here in the main interview room at 115. That'll be happening simultaneously with the Kansas Open Locker Room, just so you can plan accordingly. Coach Beeline is next. We'll see him in just a moment. And we hope you join us here in the main interview room. Hi, Jeffrey. Good. Just a reminder for those joining us here in the main interview room, during our news conferences, please refrain from all flash photography and please refrain from the use of any recording devices for video, including handheld cameras, mini cameras, and mobile phones. Unfortunately, we can't permit you to go live on any of the social media outlets during the news conferences. Uh, satellite information, we have that for those who need it. We'll do it once right now and then we'll have that information available with Hammond Communications in the center of the room. We're on Galaxy 17, Transponder 17, slot A. The rate is 11.914. The symbol is 7.2. The downlink information, 12026.5, horizontal. Again, if you need that information, we have those printed on sheets. Hammond Communications has them, and they'd be glad to share it with you. Caitlin, Blake, Morgan, and Cassie are our microphone stewards. If you have a question, for the coaches today, raise your hand and one of our microphone stewards will bring the microphone to you. Before you ask your question, please give your name and media outlet that will get to your question and keep things moving for Coach Beeline. His news conference starts in just a moment. Secret agent. Who are you guys with? Oh, you do. See, I have my own uh, fancy yeah. placard as well. I don't know what we'll do with this big crowd. I know. We got one. <laughs> once they, once they hear that you tipped, I have a feeling you know they'll come running. Can Excuse I have some water somewhere, please?
We're joined right now by head coach in the Michigan Wolverines, John Beeline. Coach, would you like to open with sure. a statement? Uh, we are uh, the University of Michigan. On behalf of our, of our uh, university, our athletic department, we're, uh, and our basketball program, we're thrilled to be uh, in San Antonio for the Final Four. This is an incredible environment. It's, it's funny, as I have been uh, coming to the Final Four since, I think, 1984, uh, that anytime it, it was in San Antonio, I said, now this, I wish that they would um, just pick four sites, and San Antonio was always one of them you could look forward to. The, uh, the, the environment's great. The uh, Alamo Dome is tremendous, and uh, we're just pleased to be here. Uh, we have a very difficult task ahead of us, uh, coming from the mid-major and uh, ranks, uh, where I, whether I was at Canisius or I was at Richmond during that time. Um, I value very much how good a team Loyola is. They're as good as any team in this tournament. They've proven that. And uh, we're going to have to play better than we've played if we're going to be playing on Monday night. Uh, we have had some really good games. We have some, some games where we weren't as efficient. Uh, and uh, th they have much respect for Porter Mosier and, and that entire program. If you have a question for Coach Beeline, please raise your hand. One of our microphone attendants will bring the microphone your way. Let's start up in the front on the left side just off the aisle. Please remember your name and media outlet, then your question. Coach Beeline, Ryan Baker, WBBM TV in Chicago. Defensively, how close are you with Loyola if you match these two teams together? I think there's a, there's a lot of similarities. I think that uh, you know, Porter, Porter's uh, worked for a few coaches, and he's, and he's uh, been a head coach uh, at Loyola and, and, some, and uh, be, before. So he's, I see the Rick Majerus influence. I see uh, just tremendous individual defenders, so they don't have to give a lot of help. And uh, we, we would like to think that we're similar in that way. I think there's a lot of similarities in these two teams. And that's why we're both here. I think we play uh, the ball the game efficiently at both ends of the floor. Uh, but both of us start with our defense, I think, that we really pride ourselves in playing good D. If you have a question for Coach Beeline, please raise your hand at this time. We have one toward the center of the room in the back. John, Josh Verlin, City of Basketball Love. Uh, Muhammad Ali Abdul Rahman was a kid who wasn't, you know, a five star recruit, wasn't highly recruited out of the Lehigh Valley. Did you expect him to have the kind of career that he's had? And, and, and can you just also just comment on the progress he's made over that yeah. time? Uh, I, I, I think expectations of recruits are just, uh, they're, they're crazy because they're, your kids are labeled as a 15, 16, 17 year old. And the expectation of people that he couldn't, he couldn't play at Michigan. Uh, we saw some intangibles there. We saw some athleticism there. Uh, and he got some great breaks, which were not necessarily great for Michigan, is that we lost our backcourt, uh, uh, a, a NBA first-round draft choice two years in a row when he was a freshman and as a sophomore in Karis LeVert. And he was forced to play as a freshman. Uh, one year, a lot, it, it, he was so young, we didn't even make the NCAA tournament. The next year, we made it. Uh, but he was allowed to play through mistakes because we didn't have anybody else. And that really helped him grow. And uh, then last year, we had some really, a really good team. He was a complimentary piece. Right now, uh, he has ascended away, far from being a complimentary piece for us. So he works hard, good kid, no maintenance, goes to class, um, just takes care of his business. Looking for the next question for Coach Beeline. If you have one, please raise your hand. We'll send a microphone in your direction. On the left side, just to the right of the aisle. Marcus Fuller, Minneapolis Star Tribune. Coach, can you talk about Charles Matthews and, uh, you know, obviously sitting out and uh, being able to, to kind of see what your program was all about in that year? Sometimes transfers obviously come in yeah. as a grad transfer and play right away, but what was yeah. the value in that? I think, you know, uh, the tra people transferring for the wrong reasons, you know, is, is, a, uh, is probably a problem in college basketball, but there's sometimes – it may be a better fit, or a kid wants to take a year and just try and get better. And he knew that that year uh, was going to be an a extremely difficult year for him, that he was not going to get to play in games. But we had to find a way during that year to just get him stronger, get him healthy, because he, he was injured when he came to us, work at his, jump, at his shooting, at his passing, at his defense, uh, and value the Michigan education as well. 
and I, I can't tell you how it's been incredible how he has bought in with everything about what the philosophy of our program. He's a student first. His, his work habits are incredible. And he, he knows his blind spots. And he wants to get better in those blind spots. And that's been a great, um, he's just been a great addition to the team. It's, a, it's amazing who his best friends are. And uh, they're, they're just good people that are, you'd never think he'd be hanging out with. He just really, wa- he just really embraces the ma- Michigan culture. Reminds me of Tim Hardaway in many ways where they just want to work and get better even though they're elite players. Looking for the next question for Coach Beeline in the center of the room. Chuck. Uh, Coach <clears throat> Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Uh, Loyola's had four different leading scores in its four tournament mm-hmm. games, and the guy who scored 23 in the regional final had zero in the first game, but a really pretty stat line anyway. Are those the hardest teams to, you know, the ones yeah. who, you know? You know, we, we guard ourselves every day the best we can, but I think they're, they're a lot like us. If you watch Mo Wagner, he'd have a monster game, and then somebody else does it. So it is uh, – these are all – they're all hard games. If they got a guy that can just – they have one guy that can just get to the foul line or shoot it, and you got a key on him, and he sees every – that's hard. But uh, you have – you need five good defenders on the floor to guard these guys because they'll find a weak guy. And uh, we've improved a lot in that area of having uh, consistency with defense, uh, one through eight. Uh, we still have some weaknesses here and there, but uh, they and they'll try and find them, and we'll try and find theirs. But it is difficult because anybody can. You, you have to guard everybody with the same respect and the same game plan. Continuing with questions for Coach Beeline, if you have one, please raise your hand. On the right side, toward the center, Ralph. I coach Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. Uh, similar question that I asked Porter, but you are looking at it from a different perspective. There's been a lot of talk about the transfers in college basketball, mm-hmm. and it tends to be talked about as a problem that needs to be fixed. And they're looking at the idea of maybe giving kids a little more freedom, not necessarily free agency, but a little more freedom. What are your perspective on the idea of giving them a little more freedom, or is it a problem that needs to be fixed? You know, I think it's, a, it's unique to each university. It's unique to each uh, individual that there's some kids that probably may need a change. And, and you know what's going to happen when they go to this, the second spot? Um, they, uh, the, the next coach is going to tell them the same thing the old other coach. Right? You don't work hard enough in the weight room. You don't practice enough. You don't, play, you, you don't play the game the right way. And sometimes people need to hear that. But there's also situations where the grass is just greener somewhere else, and it's not. You know, there's a process that people have to go through to to become a better basketball player a better student athlete and we have to we have to really work at at finding and i don't know the answer but to make sure that kids really are have transfer for the right reasons there's got to be compelling reasons to transfer and uh, sometimes it is just uh, and i think if you look at any player anywhere guys averaging 18 probably thinks he should be averaging 24 and the guy averaging two th- probably thinks you should be getting eight. And you, it's, it's really hard to just regulate all that. I just think, I think it's pretty, been pretty good, and there's nothing wrong with a transfer. But it, it shouldn't be for the wrong reasons, and many times that's what happens. People are looking to get, they want to be a pro right away, and they're not getting to be a pro, so it must be the coach's fault. So i got to go somewhere else. And that's the wrong reason. Embrace the process, see what happens. On the right side in the front, Nicole. Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic. John, apology. I know you've been talking about Luke a bit in the last couple of weeks. Um, but could you just kind of run through um, the hire of Luke? I mean, you, you, not hiring someone that <laughs> It took you, me about six weeks. So that's that what was, he, he was just, be here for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was just telling us that. Um, and, and the, you know, you, you don't normally hire someone you don't know at all. Yep. So through that process, and then, again, to just give him the reins and be like, hey, the defense, this is you get us to a level that, you know, we'll be happy with. Yeah, I, I really, I've changed and is, is, I always changing, but I changed in the last, uh, when, when, we, when Bakari Alexander and, and Val Jordan both left to take head coaching jobs, I decided, you know what, uh, this is a, uh, I want to do this right, and I need to hire somebody that, that just, that's all I want them to think about is defense. We'll work together to decide the schemes. I'm not going to just say, hey, you got the D, I don't want to hear about it. 
um, because the 40 years of coaching tells you a lot of things, but I want the voice. I changed my seating. I put the guy right next to us so I could hear it, what's going on in the game. And uh, so when I did that with Billy Donlin. I thought it worked really well. And when I did it again, it was a, a no-brainer. But I had to find that guy. And actually, uh, Dan called me from Illinois State and at, told me about Luke. And I said, I, I'm not going to hire somebody I don't know. I, I'd like to – I want to research this. And then when I heard about DeAndre Haynes as well, I said, well, I can't take two guys from the same school. I couldn't do that to anybody. And Dan was such a champion through it, saying, Coach, um, they, they, these guys deserve this opportunity. They want to play in the Big Ten. Do not let – me get in the way or, or, you know, to that. Just a, an absolute champion about it. So uh, it took me a long time, and then I just felt the good. I wanted a teacher, right? Uh, I wanted a guy that thought defense and knew defense, a relationship builder. I mean, he's, he's a high school teacher. Uh, but he knows it, those – and a brilliant one. And, and I, you bring that type of background because uh, that's what I, I think – that I, that's who I want to be known as, is a teacher and a mentor and not the coach – guy that, that taught this guy that's what that's what he does continuing with questions for coach beeline there's another one in the back of the room toward the center uh, john josh verlin city of basketball love uh, when you have someone like an eli brooks who's not potentially playing big minutes right now but mm -hmm. you want to in this stage mm -hmm. at some point in the future what do you want him to get out of being here and and being in this situation great it's a great question uh, we just had a uh, 90 minute practice where he might have been the best player on the floor and uh, so that we uh, spend so much time with those guys that don't get big minutes. Uh, if there's 20 hours in a week and maybe Muhammad and Duncan are practicing 18, they're going all 20. We want to maximize their potential. It's, it, it's really a secret, not a secret. It's, we, we, it, it's something that I think has been instrumental to our success. Why does DJ Wilson go from a freshman that doesn't play, a sophomore that rarely plays, to a first-round draft pick. It's the work you do with the guys that aren't playing. It makes your scout team better, right? And you're, you're, he, was, he, was, uh, every, he was Custer today, and if, he, if Custer plays like he plays, we're going home. He was great today. And so it, it's a really good to see him grow because he was a starter early in the year and uh, then lost some confidence. All right, go to the scout team and get better. He's got a ton of confidence right now. You may see him tomorrow. About five more minutes for questions with Coach Beeline. Let's go to the front on the right. John, you've said before after you win a big game in advance, you can't really be happy. You're more just <laughs> relieved, if anything. Have you been able to adjust that and change and soak it in a little bit more? No, now? I, I, it's not relief for a moment, and then it's what's next. Then it is obsessed with what's next. What's, I got a plan. I got, I, we have to... We have to get better. What's the schedule? What are we going to do? How, how can we maximize this time? So there's no time to, you know, just sit back and smile and laugh with everybody. It's, it's time to go to work. And that's, that's all we've been doing. Uh, Tuesday, Sunday, who knows what, what, whenever our season ends. I can sit back then, and I think I'll, I will enjoy whatever happens, right, that we, we got – uh, we either we either uh, got the most out of this team or we went all the way and won a national championship. That's the time that I'll look back and say, you know what, that, that was a fun year. In that same area, we'll go back to Nicole. Uh, John, has anyone had their high school coach call you as a <laughs> reference before? <laughs> uh, no. No, I've never had anybody call me, and the principal. And then you know the kicker was when after I'd already hired him, his wife, Amy, came up to me at an AAU tournament and and gave him a good recommendation as well. Said, told me he's a really good guy. And so I said, well, that does it. He's the next coach. <laughs> so uh, we had everybody. It's, it's a great story. And uh, he, I, I still can remember when I offered him the job, I mean, tears were in his eyes. And uh, it was, it was, uh, it's great. It's, it's, it's pr you got to pride yourself in finding the right fit as a coach. And, uh, you just cannot I, – and I think earlier in my career I was very fortunate that, okay, this guy's – they say he's a good coach. Yeah, I, I like him. I know him. Let's hire him. Now it's what do we need? What do we need this – what does this team need? Because my first loyalty is the University of Michigan to find the best coaches to represent this university that can help us win. And then the second one is to my family to make sure that Coach Beeline can keep his job. And so uh, the – it's really important that you get a good staff, and we got one. 
We're going to use the front left microphone, and we're going to go front and center to Hoops. Hoops. Hey, John. How are you? How are you, Dick? Thanks. Uh, you kind of grew up with the game and kind of worked your way up the ladder. Can you appreciate what this means to Loyola? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. It, it's a uh, – they've worked very hard, and I think you're, we've seen this with, with, with VCU. We saw it with George Mason. We saw it with Butler. These teams are good. Be, and, you know, it's just – it's the counter to what happens in many power conferences is we have this so, such young teams – and uh, then they, they have a transfer. They have, they have a young kid who just, like, came right in. The big kid has just done a great job for them as well as the, the kids that come off the bench. But we're going to see more of it. And what's what, it, what's what makes college basketball great, that it's not, uh, you know, uh, talent is very important in, to winning. Culture is very important. And when you can have a, a mid-major, low-major with a great culture, you can beat anybody, and, and, and that talent grows through practice, you can win any basketball game. And uh, that's that's what happens many times. That what happens at that level too. They don't they they don't get like all of us. And it was formerly me at the high level. You play 18 home games. You know you play a, a 11 away. He, these guys these guys are playing as many away games as home games. It's harder to win at that level because of that. With refs that you can't call the guy a supervisor official and say you know what I didn't like that ref. They're, the refs are going to be. Are going to be may be inconsistent as you travel around the country playing that schedule. Coach, we're going to go to the back of the room, toward the left. Brendan Quinn with the Athletic. Hey, John, on that subject, obviously you guys will travel well, but everyone in that stadium that's not rooting for Michigan is going to be rooting yep. for for Loyola. It'll be a little bit of a road game. Do you address the fact that you guys are kind of the quote unquote villain here in, in this story? You know, I don't. No, I don't. I don't think it's necessary. I think that they 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 know that uh, this is a great story, one that all, all of us should really admire, of what Loyola has been able to do. But uh, you know, we've played it. You, you've seen us play at Michigan State, and you've seen us play at Penn State and Maryland. People weren't cheering for us there, and uh, we'll have now Michigan. I we we probably had 20 people at those games. Uh, that had Michigan stuff, uh, maybe more, maybe f 50 people with Michigan gear on that one. We're going to have thousands and thousands. Michigan will be here strong today. And uh, we'll, uh, I don't think that will bother us. I think that this is going to be a, a great basketball game with, with two teams that really uh, have moments where they play really good basketball. Coach, let's go back to the right side. Sir, your name and media outlet. Bob Wanowski, Detroit News. Um, John, you've said a couple of times, for you personally, winning the national title isn't the goal, reaching the mm -hmm. Final Four isn't right. the goal. So how can you describe what, what drives you? I, the Big Ten Championship drives me. That's, that's what I think everybody in Michigan is, is if you win a Big Ten Championship in any way, uh, then you can win a national championship. But after that, it's, it's about breaks and, you know, anything could happen. Uh, but that's why that's why I want to be judged in Michigan. Did we compete for Michigan? Uh, did we compete for Big Ten championships? And uh, th that's how I, I, I sort of term our success. And so, that, but that doesn't. And, and then when you're all done with that, that you competed for the, the Big Ten championship. Did those kids grow? Did they get better? Are they better men on and off the court? That's what drives me. That's what drives me to see these kids. I see these freshmen right now. And uh, the, the growth I've just seen in six months is incredible. I can't imagine what they're going to be like when they're Muhammad and, and Mo and Duncan's age and they're juniors and seniors, uh, how, uh, how good a young men stu and good student athletes are going to be. We'd like to thank Coach Beeline for joining okay. us here in the main interview room. Coach, we'll see you All back right. here Thanks tomorrow. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody. Next up, ladies and gentlemen of the media, Kansas will host its open locker room from 1 to